Okay, um, I think we will start now. Welcome, friends. Um, welcome to this uh, security meetup in a, in a different setup. Um, well, it's virtual now. It's the first time we are doing this. Uh, so uh, bear with us for any unexpected um, uh, problem, uh, technical problem, but uh, we hope it will be, uh, uh, it will be okay. Um, so a quick look at uh, the agenda. We will start with the lightning talks um, and uh, during one hour. Uh, the lightning talks will be uh, live streamed on Twitch and uh, will also be recorded. And then we will have, we will try to recreate the networking that we had uh, during the meetups with breakout sessions where we will shuffle all participants uh, in breakout rooms. And of course, this part will not be uh, recorded and live streamed. So the talks, we will start with Andrea Bancaleoni, who will talk about InQL, GraphQL security testing made easy. Then Stefan Edwards and Robert Tonek from Trellot Bits for going for an evening stroll. Alisa Miller, security in the user story, DevSecOps compatible threat modeling. And then Nel Matatal from GitHub, managing content security policy and same site cookies. Um, so without waiting more, uh, Andrea, can you please share your screen and start? So today we show you InQL. InQL is a new GraphQL tooling, test tooling. And GraphQL basically is an API definition language that it enables you to define APIs and objects which you can reference and query on which you can uh, select data on these uh, APIs. For example, if we define project and a query project, we can select one of the attribute tagline through the name. Uh, the result of this query, it's the project that contains this tagline. When, it, when it's inside the HTTP, it's, uh, it translates in uh, application JSON post to one endpoint, which is usually graph, slash GraphQL, but it can map to any other endpoint. And the response, it is application JSON as well. User uh, vulnerabilities with GraphQL are missing authentication and authorization. And for in particular, for this case, is either. Uh, one other case important is information exposure. And one other is resource exhaustion. We will go through all of them in the demo. But wh while it is very easy to define APIs with GraphQL, it is quite uneasy for a tester, a penetration tester, to actually check for GraphQL vulnerabilities. In fact, before, when you were having an HTTP server exposing many REST APIs, now you have only one endpoint. For the reason we, cre we created InQL. InQL performs introspection queries to GraphQL to generate stub queries, which can be uh, sent to the endpoints directly. Basically, what the tool want to do is enabling the user to actually send this query as they were REST APIs before. So the approach is completely black box. It does not need to actually uh, know anything if the introspection APIs are enabled. And if they are disabled, it is even possible to actually perform uh, an introspection query on a JSON that it is the representation of that introspection query. It integrates with BARP. BARP is the uh, de facto standard for HTTP testing. And it can send to repeater easily. For example, this Anilist is uh, an exposed GraphQL API. And as you can see inside the Graph IQL, you can send these queries directly. And inside BARP, you can select one of these generated queries 
and send to the repeater. This is pretty much the tool. Uh, the idea is allowing the, the, the developers and the tester to have the same speed while developing and testing. So while in, in developers, it usually uh, speeds up to have some, something like GraphQL. On the tester side, it usually is low down. And for this reason, we created this flow inside BARP to actually test for this kind of stuff. So I will now go through a demo. Uh, it's possible to download in Qul from GitHub. There is today another release with some bug fixes. This is a single file Python, and it's possible to use it whether with burp or directly through pip. So basically here we can add an extension and I prepared a test API, GraphQL API for this POC at this endpoint. The request is intercepted here, and you can see that it is an introspection query. Uh, the introspection query is only checking for all the types and the names of the API. And if we can let go through this query, we can see that the, this extension can generate all the stops of the available queries. GraphQL has three types of queries. Subscription is a way of checking for a value during time. So after you get a new association, you get an open web socket and you can check for some value that is changing. Subscription uh, a mutation instead is for changing value of some something inside the database and queries instead is to query the database. In this particular case, uh, the API is not using any, anything standard for authorization. So it's not using authorization headers. It is instead using uh, authorization through uh, arguments to queries and mutation. So for example, if we want to get a token, for a veterinary with a given name. Veterinary is the user of this application. We can send it and we will have the token here. So we can try even to send this query to the repeater. And since we already obtained an access token, we can copy it to this query and send my info. As we can see, there is an error. And this is due to some limitation inside uh, this extension at the moment. Uh, this is due to the fact that docs in particular, uh, 
is inputted in the wrong way. But why? Basically, GraphIQL can fix the query for us and is adding ID. The reason for it is because dog has either name or string as mandatory value. So if we copy back this query here and send to repeater, we can see that the query is going through. So this is my info. I am the veterinary ID with ID one, uh, but this present this API present multiple issues. One of the issues is that it's getting uh, the parameter of the, the veterinary from the input of the query and not from the access token. So I can see my info of other users. And the second thing is that all the IDs are sequential. So this is uh, another case of either. We will see another one soon. So basically, uh, a user, a malicious user, can enumerate all the other users and can access all of the data of this user, user too in this vulnerable API. We can see, for example, this API. This API does not require an authorization. We can send it directly to GraphIQL. It says that it contains a collection of docs. If we run it, we will see only one because the limit is one. And we can remove one of the parameter and see all the docs. But what docs contains? Docs contains ID, name, and veterinary. So if we can check veterinary, for example, here. run it, we can see that both the docs and both the veterinary IDs are all sequential and we can infer them and actually this is another kind of either that is quite frequent inside GraphQL APIs. So another issue with, with this query that we, we are able to infer from, from the types that we saw is that while dog is containing veterinary, veterinary is contain a collection of dog as well. So in, uh, in GraphQL, it's possible to emulate what, what it is joined inside the SQL, and it is the user that selects what he wants to join. So for example, here we can ask for docs. And here we will, we will have all the, uh, all the docs, all the veterinaries of the, these dogs and the dogs of this veterinary. But we can even go further and we can nest deeper. So basically, uh, this query has an issue for, for what regards nesting. And we, if we continue to nest, we are basically telling the database to join, in, join undefinedly some data inside this query. And this will cause issues, for example, like denial of services. So it's possible to use in queue even from the command line. And it is already inside pip. It has more or less the same interface. So you select target. And 
and it will generate all the queries. In my case, it will generate all the queries here. And you can see these my docs. Differently than from, from the VARP extension, these queries are ready to be used within a URL or VGET. So you can take these queries and send it directly to your favorite tool from command line and send it to the endpoints. I developed also another feature today, and it is the ability to run in Qul standalone without burp. So basically, if you install in Qul from um, pip inside Jiton, you are able to have more or less the same interface, excluding the send to repeater. For example, here we can opening GraphQL console, and we have more or less the same effect. We can send the queries here. What we are losing in this version is the send to repeater and the ability to actually uh, have the possibility to uh, have automatic authentication. In fact, the, the BARP version is inferring the authorization headers dynamically when you are exploring the application. So that's the tool 